Uh, we're going to have sport for you in a moment, but first more on our main story. And the Prime Minister has ordered an inquiry into the contaminated blood scandal that left 2,400 people dead. Many of them were haemophiliacs who died from hepatitis C and AIDS-related illnesses after receiving contaminated blood products from the NHS in the 1970s and the 1980s. Well, we can speak now to Lord Owen, who was health minister in the 1970s. Lord Owen, thank you for your time this afternoon. When did it first become apparent that there was a problem with these blood products? In the early 70s, and that I was minister of health in 1975, and I announced to Parliament that we were going to go for self-sufficiency and that we were going to try and meet the demands on us from our own blood transfusion service because we knew that it was more likely not to be contaminated. People were more likely to be truthful when asked questions, screening questions like, have you ever been yellow, which is jaundice, which could have come from hepatitis. And there was a real problem because we couldn't at those days detect the viruses but we knew they were at risk of contamination and we thought it would be wisest for us to do it within the National Health Service. Uh, Parliament uh, was never told that in fact after a few years financially they started to slow down the self-sufficiency program and we then became more and more dependent on marketized health service uh, uh, provision of blood transfusion from commercial companies and not from the National Health Service. And sorry, forgive me, did you say Parliament wasn't told? Parliament was never told when I answered the written questions saying we were going for self-sufficiency and they were never told we've now not going to be self-sufficient, we're going a different route. And of course that in part contributed to the problems and to the deaths of so many people. Well, I, I tried for many, many years, 30, 40 years, to get her an inquiry. The facts have been out there. There was a private inquiry led by a former uh, Attorney General, Peter Archer, uh, with um, Alf Morris had pushed very hard in the House of Lords. That did a, a bit of good and it got some of the facts out, but we really have never been able to get successive governments to inquire into this. Of course, it's a scandal why? around the world. Wh why well, has it taken so them. very long, in, in well, your opinion? I, I, why are my own papers uh, scrapped after 15 years without any consultation with me at all, even though I was active in politics? Why did uh, Sir Patrick Jenkins, who was uh, Secretary of State for Health afterwards, couldn't find the evidence which he thought was in his own papers and raise some questions about this. We don't know. What sort of remit is this inquiry going to have to have if it's going to be successful and answer some of the questions that you've just mentioned? Well, if there is any hint, whatever, of uh, cover-up, then I think people must give evidence under oath. But remember, an awful lot of these people are no longer alive. Uh, and if it's wise to use a panel, which some people think is a helpful technique, very good idea. Whether it should be a high court judge sitting on it, I think I leave to the government. They've got to weigh this. They may well have evidence. After all, we know that 300 people have got together in a broader case, and government have probably seen some of these documents. And they may find in that document so one or two uh, very troubling things. I don't know. But something has triggered this after all these years of refusing to have an inquiry. I went to the health ombudsman time and time again with an individual case from my constituency of a person who had HIV. And they, the health ombudsman would not look at clear evidence of um, bad administration. A lot of questions to be answered. Lord Owen, thank you very much. Uh, Lord Owen, former health minister.